So, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Veet, and welcome to our first panel, uh, and I will be presenting on Archetropy. Uh, I do have a presenter view up so that I can uh, see the chat and the panel questions channel, but I might miss something because it's a lot of different windows to look at at once. All right, recording has started. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Veet. I am presenting for you today our first panel on Archetropy. Uh, and I will be able to see the Discord and the panel chat and panel questions channels, but it's a lot of windows to look at at once. So um, I might miss some questions. Uh, we'll do our best. So uh, let's begin. Um, all right. So uh, what is my agenda for today? I'm going to introduce what Archetropy is, uh, defining the term, its relationship to other ultra-human labels like therianthropy, other kennedy, kith types, heart types, paratypes, etc. Uh, defining what an archetype is and what it means to identify as one. Uh, introduce some terms and symbols related to this particular community, and um, it, and then sort of wrap it all up and bring it together. Uh, so, about me, my name is V. Nice to meet you all. I know several of you from various discords. Uh, I prefer no pronouns, but they, them, or any neo pronoun is okay as an auxiliary. I'm a border collie Therian, a fallen otherkin, a uh, furry in general. Um, I will bring up that I am a mental health professional uh, because it's something that I will use as an example later in this presentation. I'm going to ask at this time, please don't ask me to be your therapist. First of all, you're probably not in my licensure ju jurisdiction. Second of all, it's just I can't give you Discord therapy. That's not ethical for me or really helpful for you. <laughs> um, and uh, But most relevant to this presentation, uh, I identify as a paladin and right-hand man archetype. Um, all right, and wow. Uh, yeah, that is a, a scary uh, amount of personal loyalty if you put all of those kin types and archetypes together. Uh, so that gives you an idea of my personality. Um, all right, so to get us started, um, so let's get into the term, uh history of the term and justification for why i'm bothering to give this talk at all or why the word archetropy should exist uh, so what is archetropy it's an ultra human label for identifying with or as an archetype trope stock character etc uh in ways that might be similar to a kin type uh this word was coined deliberately to be linguistically flexible. So I might say I am an archetrope, my archetrope as a type is paladin, I have a right-hand man archetrope, I am an archipaladin, uh, I experience archetropy as a noun, or I value the archetropal community. Um, so have, with, are, all of those are linguistically perfectly fine. Um, all right, uh, moving along. Uh, so the history of archetypal identity. So the term archetrope in that specific wording was coined in 2021 by the Corvidae Collective uh, in non-human national park forums. Uh, shout out. Uh, however, this is obviously not the first time discussions of archetypes were present in the alter human community. So uh, in early years, I have some citations from 2006, 2009, and continuing into the present day, archetypal reasons for identifying as Therian and other kin existed. So for example, um, somebody might identify with dragons in a way that connected to the sort of story archetype of dragons or the archetype of a cat. Uh, but these were typically um, identities that we would consider Therian or other kin, like animals or mythical creatures, but connect to in an archetypal way, and I'll talk more about that distinction later. 
Um, and then around the 20 teens, there were discussions of concept kin. Uh, so a broader umbrella term of people who identified with broader concepts such as music or glitches or void or and some of these were so-called like title kin prince kin knight kin etc but at the time at least from what sources i could find this was often debated and kind of gate kept and rejected uh so um uh for example, uh, I was able to find an old Tumblr post where some anonymous person said, I agree that object, time, and title kin aren't possible, but I believe concept kin is. So I just find that a fascinating sort of line to draw in the sand, where someone can go, oh, of course somebody can identify as music or neon, but not king or... Uh, mad scientist, right? So I, I'm not trying to call out that person. Again, they're anonymous. I don't know who they are. But it's an interesting perspective to see the kind of gatekeeping and discussions that were happening around this time and the level of rigidity, for lack of a better word, around the idea that, like, yes, you can be the dragon, but you can't be the princess. Uh, um, so... Um, so that might be why in 2017, when somebody coined trope type in the alt age forums, it for some reason did not get a lot of ground. It wasn't particularly popularly used. I love the word trope type. I was really sad to find out that it had been coined earlier and not particularly uh, gotten off the ground. And I would suspect it might have been because the, the community was still in this midst of what concepts are acceptable to identify as and what aren't. Um, so, uh, the Silver Elves, um, classic historians of other kin identity, also have surveys in which people identify as ranger and witch kind. Um, the survey I was able to find was published in 2019, but probably contains earlier data. So that, again, that idea of like a ranger, a witch, these are not species, these are particular story characters and types of people. Uh, and then similarly, there are forum threads, hinting as recently as 2020, of people identifying as ranger or primal or in other ways fitting these sort of roles. So Archetrope in 2021 was not the first time this concept had been brought into the community. Um... Uh, so, uh, here's where I'm going to make that distinction I mentioned earlier between archetypal causes and archetypal identity. Uh, now, this is a bit of a, you know, um, splitting hairs, but, um, so, for example, so, uh, in a lot of those historical archetypal identity discussions, um, the, um, uh, Species was something that we would usually uh, consider um, uh, uh, an animal species or a mythical creature, and the archetype was the reason for identifying as it. So, for example, uh, the same way that people talk about psychological or um, spiritual reasons for identifying as something. So somebody could identify as a dragon due to neurodivergence, or as an alien due to past life beliefs, or as a cat for archetypal reasons, right? So their species is cat, but their reasoning is due to the archetype of a cat in stories. Um, whereas on the other hand, archetypal identity is about what the thing you identify is as. So if I identify as a mad scientist due to psychological reasons, or I identify as a magical girl due to spiritual parallel life reasons, or I identify as a hermit by voluntary choice. Um, obviously, there is going to be a gray area between these things. Archetypes are constructed by cultures. They are what stories people tell, and that includes stories about animals. A lot of Aesop's fables are about very archetypal animals. So someone who identifies as a cat archetype for archetypal reasons can use both therian and archetrope terminology. It's like, I'm not going to police that language, and it doesn't make sense 
to make a hard line distinction there, but I did want to sort of um, make a distinction between are you talking about the cause or are you talking about the nature of the identity? Um, why bother with a new term if we already have all these great terms like other kin and Therian and all of the others? Um, well, a lot of early archetype discussions were still rooted in non-humanity, so like feral or wild archetypes, uh, such as that ranger kin example. And that's not necessarily universal, and I think it's worth... Um, uh, sort of broadening the scope of that, especially as many archetypes are explicitly human or species neutral. Um, archetypal identities can differ substantially from both species and individual, as in for fiction can identities. Right? I think there is a lot of overlap and a lot of similarity, but it is different enough that I feel like it's useful having a community term. Um, Existing language doesn't necessarily apply. Uh, I think concept kin is a broader umbrella term, but uh, that archetype can fit under. But um, it also covers more abstract concepts, such as music or colors or space. Um, and uh, in general, and this is why I'm giving this presentation, giving the sub-community an actual term allows for more discussion and exploration and experiences. Uh, so, um, yeah, uh, because already from what I'm seeing in the panel chat, several people are going like, oh, wait, this might fit me, and I'm not sure they would have been able to have that realization if nobody gave them a word for it. Um, all right, so if we're talking about archetypes and what it means to identify as one, I feel like we should define what an archetype is. Um, so, in my conceptualization, an archetype is by definition a very big idea. It's fundamentally larger than life, they are simplified and iconic, the way that a shadow cast on the wall is more simplified than a three-dimensional being, but can really capture the, like, typical essence of it. Uh, this makes actually embodying archetypes kind of unrealistic to real life, but it does make them impactful and meaningful. Um, sort of like the cartoon character version of something. Uh, so, uh, archetypes are by de definition narrative tools. They are socially constructed and culture specific. There are certain archetypes that are belong to particular cultures or particular historical eras or have slight differences um, from one culture to another. No possible list of all possible archetypes would ever be comprehensive. There are tools that can document or list them or like find examples, but they're not, that's not defining them. Uh, Carl Jung, famous historical psychologist, believed that humanity had a collective unconscious and that there were several cross-cultural shared archetypes that people just knew or lived in, and you can find his list. Um, uh, TV Tropes is a very popular source for naming and describing popular tropes in media, but it's sort of like an encyclopedia. It's sort of describing particular narrative trends. It's not the limiting factor or uh, be-all, end-all. Tarot cards are often archetypal, right? The idea of the emperor, the priestess, the fool. These are very, like, historical literary identity. And if you're more into folklore, um, uh, there's the Arne Thompson Uther classification of folktales, um, where, uh, which, again, in a very historical and sociological sense, classifies different trends and um, characters in folktales. Uh, so, you know, the evil stepsister, the animal bride. Uh, so any of these are possible, you know, explorations of tropes throughout history, but none of them are one strict list of every archetype that exists. And there's going to be natural overlaps and interrelationships between archetypes. Uh, within the archetype of the hero, you have the guile hero and the like strength-based hero and the magical girl and the superhero, and all of those are their own archetype in a sense. Uh, which term fits is entirely personal to the person. Um, so, 
My particular argument will be that it is best to think of archetropes as a social role. Uh, hey, V, what do you mean by social role? What the heck does that mean? Uh, so, for example, if I use the word sister, that word has a lot of meanings in different filters and perspectives. I could say it's a biological meaning of two people that share parents. Right. Um, there is a legal meaning in the cases of adoption or marriage. Uh, there is a cultural meaning. So, for example, in the kinship system that I'm familiar with, which is sort of American and Western European, sister specifically means direct parentage, and I would use the word cousin for a different family relationship. But there are other kinship systems and other cultures and languages that use the same word for some of those terms, or use different words for older sister or younger sister. Uh, so there, again, sister has a different meaning. And then there's an emotional and interpersonal meaning. People that say sister to mean a very close, emotionally bonded person. Sister as a someone of a shared culture. Um, so sister as a general word, is a social role. It can fit any of these particular meanings and might in a different context, but it's sort of a broader concept that all of these fall under. Um, so, uh, to demonstrate this as a comparison and contrast, I'm going to compare my social role as a counselor with my archetypal role as a paladin. Uh, so, as a counselor, why why do I have this profession? Uh, part of it is um, internal traits that are just part of my personality. Uh, so just who I am as a person is a good fit for the kind of work that I do and the way I think about things. Uh, there's also personal experiences that I had. So as a child, I read science magazines about neurology and I took AP psychology courses and these got me interested in psychology as a concept. There is a legal definition. In order to call myself specifically a licensed counselor, I had to get a specific kind of education. I had to take tests and get a license and certification. Um, there is an ethics code that uh, I am expected to abide by, both legally and morally. Uh, there's also a way of thinking and being. So if you look at it from a strictly legal perspective, I was not a counselor until I got my license from my particular state. But even when I was still getting my graduate school education, our professors encouraged my, myself and my peers to start thinking as ourselves as counselors or counselors in training to start adopting that identity internally and to think of it not just as a legal text box, but as something that we were embodying as a way of thinking or being, that we were counselors even when we weren't in session with someone. And it requires ongoing choices. I have to maintain continuing education and also I could change my career at any time. So to compare that to my paladin identity, some of why I believe that I am a paladin has to do with innate traits, like my own neurodivergence and personality, and how those map on to how I view the world. Uh, some of it is personal experiences. Part of the reason I identify as a paladin, as opposed to some other kind of fighter or warrior archetype, is specifically my particular religious history and background. Uh, there's some quasi-voluntary aspects. There's aesthetics I like, or media that I have specifically sought out. Uh, to strengthen this identity. It overlaps with other identities, um, including my counseling career that I previously mentioned, since that's a helping profession, and um, also my dog stereotype. When I talk about my paladin and right-hand man identities, it's hard to draw a distinguishing line between that and the loyalty of a dog, or the sort of... Um, duty and particular behaviors of a herding dog or a working dog. Uh, and there are deliberate decisions. I have specifically written up personal codes to be more paladin-like. Uh, I've engaged in activism on purpose to become a street medic as a paladin-ish activity. And before the term archetrope was coined, I started identifying as a paladin by essentially making the conscious decision I want to be that in real life. And to me, that's the boiled down essence of archetropal identity is finding 
a trope or an archetype or a stock character and going, both that's what I am and that's what I want to enact. Um, other people can, of course, disagree with me. Uh, so, is it voluntary or involuntary, intrinsic or in extrinsic, identify as or identify with, kin or kith or link-like? All of the above. All of them. Yes. Um, uh, the, the term is very deliberately broad and runs across these borders. Um, that's, what, that's how it was coined, and that's how I'm using it, and that's how I hope other people use it. Um, because I think making a distinction between a voluntary link, a internal identity, just does not make sense in this context. I both am a paladin for traits I was born with, and chose to be a paladin on purpose. So, there we go. That's my take on it. Um, so, uh, additional turns and symbols, um, just associated currently with this identity, although I will talk about that a bit later. Um, so, uh, Pyrotypes, coined by Poppy slash Aetherians in 2019. I love this word. Uh, uh, meaning currently a character, animal, or mythical creature that is not a kin type or a heart type, but somehow feels important to an established identity. Uh, uh, so I have tried to get off the ground um, two related words to that. Uh, one being paratrope is in a similar or related archetype. So, for example, if I'm a paladin, that's a trope. There are similar tropes, like cleric or magical hero, that I think are close enough to paladin that they're going to hit some of the same buttons, the way a paratype does. Uh, and this one's re really clunky, so I kind of hope somebody coins a better version of it. Uh, but I've been personally using para-archetrope to specifically mean a character, being, or other entity. So as opposed to just a general trope that feels relatable, a character that feels relatable because they fit the archetype. So um, for my paladin identity, that can be Pearl from Steven Universe or Reba Cheap from Narnia. Uh, for my right-hand man archetype, that's like Yogurita from Reborn, right? These are specific characters where I'm like, that's a paladin or that's a right-hand man and therefore they're going to hit some of my archetype buttons. Uh, so, I will uh, point out that uh, back in 2021, when the word was being coined, I got very excited and uh, made up a sort of mock-up symbol for Archetropy, which was then made better by other people. Uh, uh, so, I will get into the um, reasons why I chose these particular imagery in a second. So um, I, I made the symbol to look particularly like roots um, to exemplify what, how multiple stories, elements, and myths come together to make an archetype. An archetype is not one character. It is coming from multiple stories. Uh, and then multiple aspects of life, both voluntary and involuntary, come together to make up an archetypal identity. Uh, the droplet shape was meant to represent uh, both seeds in terms of like growing from the roots, but I was also hoping that the seed-root combo would sort of look like a fire or campfire uh, to evoke the aspect of storytelling, which often happens by fire or candlelight, and passing the torch across mediums and generations. And the double nature of the, the droplet shape was meant to in invoke resonance and mirroring, uh, the idea of being cast from the mold, the idea of a seed opening or blossoming, and in the case of a fire, uh, shadow projection silhouette, right? The idea uh, that I mentioned earlier that an archetype is to a real being the way a shadow is to the like three-dimensional shape. Um, it's also a small Jungian reference because even though I don't use Jungian psychology, I wanted to have a little nod to one of the historical definers of archetypes and collective unconscious. Um, so, uh, uh, so, uh, somebody else, um, also, uh, coined a flag for this particular identity, uh, with colors meaning, uh, cyan for tropes and archetypes, blue for relationship to other aspects of identity, uh, magenta for depth and intensity, red for, uh, the distinct, the distinction of this identity within older humanity, 
uh, yellow for creativity and diversity, green for development and transformation over time, and black for that same shadow or imprint meaning. Um, uh, and I was not the person to design this flag, so the corner of that can hopefully uh, um, speak to that in more detail. Now, uh, the thing I want to very much clarify about these symbols, both the symbol that I coined and the flag, is that if you do not like them, do not use them. It's fine. <laughs> this is very early. Uh, as far as I am concerned, um, the current symbols and flags of Archotropy are to what the community will be in the future, what a bull head is to the letter A. Like, I am genuinely hoping that people come up with their own symbols, come up with their own terminology, change these over time, mold them the way that community molds them into something that eventually will become more usable or more, um, like, uh, iconic. This was me proposing a thing by, like, throwing it out into the ether, and I really genuinely hope that the ether tosses it around and comes back with something else, something more developed, something better. By all means, these symbols and flags and other things are meant to be the start of conversation, not the end of it. Um, so, uh, uh, as my closing thought, if this term fits you, please use it. Use another term. Make up other words. Talk about it. Write about it. Question it. Challenge it. Explore it. Engage in introspection with yourself and discussion with others. I really hope that this can be a community that develops its own language and symbols and just I, opens up the realm of these identities and what they mean. And it can only be a community if people make it one. So that is my call to action for everyone in this panel. Um, and then I have several pages of references. And that is all. Thank you, everyone. Um, I will stay in and hopefully try to answer questions if I can see them. Um, I'm not seeing anything in panel questions, so if you were making a panel before, um, or if you were asking questions before, please repeat them in the panel chat, because I've missed them. There's 200 messages in this chat. Okay, these are moving fast. Um, all right, there was a question from Treason and Dota. Is this coming from someone from it as well? Just the corpse numbers in architect. I don't know what the corpse is. Possibly. <laughs> Uh, will the PowerPoint thingy be available after this? Uh, the panel is being recorded. I am also happy to share a PDF of the panel slides with anyone. Uh. Uh, um, voxel, if I'm reading it right, that's could something be an Architrope if it's like your dream job category? I would certainly say so, but I am not the uh, president of Architropes. If there's anything I want people to take away from this panel, it's that you can use whatever language you want forever. Um, that's going to be my answer most questions for... Uh, for is this does this count is going to be if you think it does. Uh, um, if someone identifies as an archetype for archetypal reasons, is that redundant? I think that makes a lot of sense. 
I made that distinction to, because for some people it matters, but as I said, I think there's a lot of overlap between the two. All right, there's a panel questions chat. Hooray. Um, can you identify both as kin as the, and the related archetype? I don't see why not. Um, uh, if people are certain archetypes or tropes in real life, would someone like that be able to identify as an archetype, even if they technically just are it? Again, my default answer is going to be sure. Like, I think there's something powerful in embracing something on purpose. Um, um, <laughs> can we elect you president of Archetropes? Please don't. <laughs> uh, I very much do not want to take authority over this. Uh, I'll be the right-hand man to the president of Archetropes if someone else is president. That is a joke, but also. Um, Would traditionally negative tropes count? Absolutely. Uh, what's the funniest moment when the universe typecast you before you knew the term archetrope? Um, being a teacher's pet in school for me personally. And uh, Poppy now to the paragraph question. Thank you, Bob. Uh, Lauren Brush asks, like, I'm trying to think of how this reflects on folks who identify as ultra human or don't even know about alt ID in the first place, saying things like, I'm a fireman and I have been for 20 years, or I am a doctor. I think this falls into that gray area of like, well, what is an alternate to human identity? Because a lot of people do identify with their jobs or their careers or specific roles in life. Um, uh, I used the example of a sister in my panel because. I have a sister, I identify as a child and a sibling and a partner to my romantic partners. And for me personally, those things don't feel like archetypes, but um, I think the social role aspect is similar in terms of how it feels internally between my job, which is as a mental health professional and my paladin archetype. It's just that one of those social roles is something that's is publicly known and socially understood as part of human life and identifying as a paladin is a bit more unusual. Uh, uh, where do you draw a line between wanting to be a specific archetype IRL and being archetropic? I do not draw that line. I became a paladin when I said to myself, I on purpose want to be a paladin in real life. So that's how I think of it. <laughs> Uh, apparently I cut out in my answer to the last one, so I'm going to repeat myself. Uh, so the question was, where do you draw a line between wanting to be a specific archetype in real life and being archetropic? Is there no line at all? I would argue that there's no line at all. My, in my personal journey, I became a paladin the day that I decided I want to be this in real life and started acting accordingly. Um, so for me, my archetypal identities are things I do or things I am trying to embody. Mm. 
That's an interesting question. Uh, Kindy Diaz, in your opinion, do you think human is an archetype as well? And my default answer was going to be no, because I think human is very broad and archetypes are sort of specific stock characters and tropes. But I think in several fantasy settings, like D&D or several sci-fi settings, there is an archetypal human, right? Humans as the default or humans as the medium character. So I think in that sense, it absolutely could be, right? The idea of the quintessential human, uh, but it's only really visible and distinct from other things. Um, ooh, uh, Swiftpaw asked, are there people with archetypal identities which are based on being a foil, counterpart, or parallel to certain character or trope? Um, I would say absolutely, because one, I am a right-hand man, which is dependent on there being a particular person to be a right-hand man, too. And partially due to that and the paladin thing, I also relate strongly to the tropes of nemesis, lancer, and rival, all of which are, like, a lancer is the protagonist's primary foil. So hit me up about foil discussions. I'm here for that. Uh, is there a way or place to find the specific name and characterizations for your archetrope? Uh, not necessarily, absolutely. Uh, I mentioned TV tropes is a popular one. There's folklore indexes. There's Jungian archetypes. There's tarot cards. But it, like none of those are absolute, right? There's not one strict definition of every every archetype ever. What is your favorite type of foil? I think I've only ever interacted with aluminum foil, so it wins by default. Um, unless, maybe fencing foils. I don't fence, but they're cool. Uh, since you have a known archetype yourself, do you know what your archetype isn't on paper? What are some things you aren't aspiring to be, and how do you intuit that? I don't think of this a lot. Um... I mean, there are some things I'm just not interested in. I am not interested in clowns or pirates, for example, so those just don't cross my mind. Um, in terms of things that I'm not, I do have to give a shout out to the Magnificent Bastard trope, which feels sort of paratypish to me, but in a very antagonistic way, where it's like, this is almost a paladin in terms of having the charisma and dedication and single-handed focus, but evil. Uh, so that's a whole dynamic. Oh, yes. Uh, shout out to Trope Talks by Overly Sarcastic Produ Productions. Um, yes, exactly. Like a zebra fairy and might have a lion pair type. Xanatos is the quintessential magnificent bastard. No notes. Excellent. Yes, uh, as children says, if known trope types don't fit you, homemade ones are fine. Uh, do you have an end goal or long term version for yourself influenced by your archetrope? Honestly, I'm at a stage in my life where I'm feeling pretty satisfied in at least my paladin archetrope. My job helps me access some of those feelings and urges in terms of helping other people. Um, I'm engaged in like activism the way I want to be. All of my friends know about my type, so they get me aesthetic things like paladin mods. Uh, I play D&D, it's a vibe. Um, Right-hand man is a bit harder to embody, and I'm not sure how that will look in the future, but um, yeah. Mm. 
Uh, is the concept of archetypes all encompassing? Would you say that a mind can be fully described by the concept of archetypes, or do you think there are also parts of the mind that do not fit into archetypal categories? This is also going to be a thing that's very individual. Personally, um, even though there are overlaps, I do think there are parts of me that aren't necessarily covered by my archetypal identities, right? They cover a lot of ground, like including a personality and religious background and preferences, but also my stereotypes include some of <laughs> my identity aspects and things that aren't stereotypes or archetypes are some of my identity aspects, like my cultural background, my family role. Um, there's just so many aspects to what an individual being or a plural being, for that matter, can be that um, I think it's hard for anyone to be encompassed by any one thing, but that's going to be a very personal question. Uh, what helps when mundane life things by necessity go against the grain of your trope type? Excellent question. Um, so, uh, I personally try to sort of act in as according to my principles as I can, or find other ways to uh, embody or express that trope type in other spheres. So, like, um, Right. The same way that if something in my real life goes against my moral values or my personal preferences, right, that the approaches are very similar of this feels uncomfortable, but I'm going to try to either mitigate the damage as much as possible or uh, sort of cope through it. Do you have pen down values or a code? Yes, I have made a code twice. <laughs> I think I think some of the write ups are on my uh, Tumblr blog. Um, although I might update them because they're a few years old at this point. Look. What's being a paladin for if not to have rigid rules and an oath? It's part of the deal. Right, we are getting close to time, and I want to give people time to transition and um, go into other panels. I think there's other panels happening. Um, oh, uh, but I can get that last question. How does Paladin intersect in contrast with similar tropes? Uh, for me, a lot of similar tropes feel like paratypes. Like, there might be a character that's a cleric and not a paladin, but it's like, okay, that's 90% the same. <laughs> right. Uh, or, um, I think it contrasts with a lot of, like, villainous tropes and chaotic tropes um i do not currently have an oath object i have thought of making one but it hasn't happened yet uh my tumblr has not been shared in the social media channel but i will share it after this because that's where i do a lot of my art type writing Right, I'm going to stop sharing and uh, close that on. Thank you, everyone, for coming. I am really glad about the discussion that we've all been able to have. And I really hope that this opened up some things for people. <laughs>